Hey everybody, Anne here. I just wanted to welcome you to the 26th day of our internal cleanse, and we're still in the fourth week of the class postings. Um, if you've noticed, the lighting is, I'm trying to get the lighting right. Um, I'm now using a small tablet instead of my phone to make these recordings, and so I have to adjust things. Anyway, I'm so happy to be here with you. If you have had a chance to read today's post, you'll see that it's more about stress. And we have talked about stress, but if you remember the um, doTERRA wellness pyramid, I'm going to sort of go at that a little bit of a different way. So you've got an eating right, exercising and weight management, resting and managing stress, and um, reducing your toxic load. And honestly, although stress is at this level on the pyramid officially, it actually enters our lives, as you know, in all areas. For example, we've been talking about um, the blood type diet, which I'm very much a, fa a fan of, so that stress can enter simply by the food that you eat. If it's not the food that your body processes easily or in fact is toxic to your body, then you're getting stressed simply by putting something in your mouth. And honestly, food is either medicine or poison. So everything that you put inside your body is either helping you to heal and grow or it's attacking you. And I know that sounds extreme, but it's really true. So that's a one way to get rid of some very basic stress and to keep your gut balanced. And then the next thing is exercise and weight management. Now, there are all kinds of fads and, you know, popular things, just like there are with um, food, with diets. But, again, because I believe so firmly that people's bodies are individual and they're constructed and designed to work best optimally in different ways, I also believe that... Um, you can be stressed by doing the wrong exercises. I mean, obviously you can be stressed by not doing any or by doing too much, even of things that are good for you. But I honestly believe that you can hurt yourself or you can be doing a lot of something that isn't really challenging your body enough and so you're not seeing the results even though you might be spending a lot of time. So, um, pardon my phone, I think I'll just turn down the ringer. But what I want you to understand from today is that even weight, uh, exercising and weight can cause you stress. So there are ways to minimize your stress by doing the right kinds of things in the right kind of order. So if you think about the different blood types and the characteristics <clears throat> of the people who have those different blood types because of how their blood was originally formed, first of course you go to the type O and the type O is um, a hunter. So if you think about a hunter just out there just physical, 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 running away from animals, running toward animals, having to kill them, having to bring them down, cut them up, drag them places and things like that. So a type O manages stress best by releasing it through very vigorous physical exercise. So my son, who's an O, has for several years, uh, first he was in the Marine Corps, and then he had a job where he had to walk, constantly be in action, uh, he is anyway. And then for the past, I don't know, 10 years at least, maybe more, he's been doing very vigorous salsa when he's not at work, being active all the time. So that to me, he's a quintessential O. He, that's how he gets rid of stress. Then you would go to the opposite, which is an A. A is the agrarian diet, a lot of grain, um, very little meat, a little fish, but mostly grains. Um, and so the O gets rid of stress, I mean the A gets rid of stress by things that are really calming. Just calming. And, um, you know, very 
gentle walking, like strolling, kind of, if you know that pace that strolling is. Um, very light aerobics. The, um, very calm yoga. So we're talking about things that are that would drive an O crazy, quite frankly. <laughs> um, and then there's a B. Uh, oh, and an A, my husband is an A. And he loves um, very slow and liquid yoga moves and very, very um, mellow Tai Chi things and just contemplative almost kinds of exercises. Then me, I'm a B, and a B is balanced in all things, in exercise as well as food. So the best thing for me is to do things that are moderately active, and especially um, things that involve other people. So um, for about seven years, I was able to fit into my schedule until fairly recently going to curves. <laughs> and curves was a perfect kind of exercise for me because it was a circuit where you did, you know, 30 seconds of intense and then 30 seconds of, you know, keeping your heart going but less intense. And you did that for about half an hour. And in the meantime, most of the time, there would be at least one or two other ladies in there. And so we would talk, and I mean, I'm telling you, it was that, for me, thinking about it uh, in the terms of the blood type, curves is absolutely perfect for a B. So, um, and tennis, and um, I love to uh, power walk, not hiking so much, but power walking. I love to walk at a really brisk pace. So things like that um, are very B-ish. And then an AB is like an O in terms of how stressed they can get, um, but they don't at all, they're like an A in terms of what they can, should put out in terms of sheer energy in their exercise. So the difference between an AB and an A, from what I've been able to learn, is that the AB really yearns, their bodies yearn for extreme mental focus in the exercise. So calming, but very, very mentally focused. So the uh, certain kinds of yoga, for example, golf or chess, um, the chess type, very, very intense focus. Chess isn't an exercise, although I suppose mentally it is. Um, anyway, I would, again, very much suggest that you look into this book, Eat Right for Your book Type, because every single section has the um, exercises that are really good for that particular blood type. Let me just go and show you about a B, because it's not just one kind of exercise, it's things that you should um, do and how often you should do them. So I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to hold it up a little bit so you can see it. There's one side, and here's the other side. So you'll see it says um, aerobics, 40 to 60 minutes, three times a week. Same with tennis, martial arts, calisthenics, hiking, cycling, swimming, brisk walking, jogging, weight training, golf, tai chi, and hatha yoga. So the, the golf, tai chi, and hatha yoga are two times a week, 45 to 60 minutes. And then the other ones are three times a week. So even in terms of exercise, the bee is very balanced of the different things that a bee can do and the times a week they can do it. What surprised me for a bee, because a bee is you know, still wanting a fair amount of exercise, um, is that nothing was more than three times a week and that those some of those things were two times a week. And that was pretty surprising to me because um, when I learned about it because I thought it would be more. Um, whereas with a an O, O goes at least um, three to four times a week in 
some of the in almost everything and five times a week if it's brisk walking and then it has things like let's see contact sports i didn't that's not in any of the other ones so my son the marine the salsa dancer was a football player and so um anyway uh in line or roller skating that kind of thing really really aggressively physical so i would highly recommend that you consider that because i've known people who were a's or a b's and they were trying to go and do very intensive aerobic and weight workouts and you know five times a week or six times a week and they were hurting themselves whereas um o's that were trying to just do yoga unless it was very uh, a certain kinds of yoga that can be very very physically demanding um, they just weren't seeing the results in terms of toning and release of stress more than anything so that's in the exercise portion the next portion would be to rest and manage stress now um, we've talked about that you should get a certain amount of rest every night uh, different people need different amounts uh, usually seven to eight hours is considered optimal some people need more some people can get by on less but when I say get by I think that over the long term it does sort of rob from your you optimal performance but then when it says manage stress as I said there's all kinds of stresses so for example um, just in this this is one of my great resource books for figuring out how to help people with conditions that I might not have myself or have dealt with myself or at least not for a long time and it's called modern essentials it's in the ninth edition now but for example just listed under stress if you have oils and you can't remember what you how you should even start um, it's got diffusing lavender or grapefruit oil in a diffuser that kind of just calms you down and uplifts you um, you can add things to the bath as we had talked about the relaxing or detox bath and honestly a 20 minute bath like that with oils epsom salt and baking soda for me that's the one time in my whole week that i can absolutely totally relax clear my mind I don't get distracted or anything and I'm that's that's the one that really works for me but different people have to, you know why it works for me because because of the water I don't dare read I don't dare play on my emails and my Facebook and I don't mean play I mean it's I'm working but still it's you know mind going mind going mind going um, I can't be doing housework I can't be doing gardening so <laughs> I give myself permission to just be and um, it's been a lifesaver believe me but then it also says oils for stress and has a lot of different ones then it goes into specifics chemical stress emotional stress environmental stress mental stress performance stress physical stress stress due to tiredness and insomnia it's got different oils and different recipes for each one of those so when we talk about stress um, it's important especially if you're incorporating the oils into your whole regimen and I highly advise that of course because they help in so many levels is that you you hone in on what kind of stress you're talking about and that'll make it a lot easier for you to be effective in what you're doing to to um, deal with it cope with it and get rid of it release it the last thing I'm going to leave you with is something that um, I learned probably about 10 years ago. I was very blessed to go for about three years, get training at a place called the Aesthetic View Institute in Fresno, California. I believe that it is no longer in existence because the founder and the person who took it on after him um, have both uh, either well the founder passed away and I think the other person um, is no longer able to do it so 
but while I was there, what I learned was a lot of techniques for using your thinking and visualization to literally change your blood flow and allow you to stay calm and open and curious rather than to, to go to your limbic system where you get the fight, flight, or freeze. And these techniques um, are work well because they're so simple and you can use them anywhere. So I thought that I would um, explain a little bit about why they work and then tell you about one exercise that could be helpful to you. So the reason that you sometimes get paralyzed or take an action that later you can't even figure out why you did it, the fight, flight, or freeze, is that when your body confronts something, like I talked the other day about a snake coming at you or something like that, the blood flows away from your frontal lobes where you do your intellectual thinking and it flows back toward your limbic system to help your body get ready to do whatever needs to be done in this emergency situation. And we talked about the fact that that's perfectly fine and healthy when you deal with the emergency situation by fighting or going away and then everything dissipates and the cortisol dissipates. But if you are constantly or very regularly being stressed in that way, um, it can have a terrible effects on your body because your blood is not flowing to where you can do your best thinking. So just as a matter of course, the more you can anticipate situations and even role play with yourself. You know how world quality athletes, the way they get as good as they are, certainly do, they do lots of physical practice, shooting ho hoops, um, running, whatever their sport is. But in their mind they do it too, especially, you know, you hear Olympic athletes talk about how I saw myself crossing the finish line. I saw myself shaving 10 seconds off. And they mean it, it's inside your head. So one of the best things that you can do is be very, very um, conscious of your thoughts and purposely corral them to stay away from negative thinking toward positive thinking and beyond just positive, but, but to be thinking of you as the achiever, you as the succeeder the overcomer. So for example, if you have a situation at work and you have uh, somebody who is your manager or supervisor or even a coworker that is you're always kind of butting heads with or it's you don't ever feel quite right, you don't feel your performance is right or whatever. What you can do beforehand is just think through, think through, think through and play out the scenarios so that you don't wind up being tense. They don't change. You work on you. You work on how you can react to it or not react to it. Just hold your tongue, keep a pleasant face, just nod and leave. And each person will figure out the way that will work best for them. But honestly, the more you can just play that over and over in your head, with any situation, the more you can just remain open and curious and allow your blood, when the thing happens, allow your blood to keep flowing to the front of your brain where you have endless options, all of your experience available. Because the minute that the blood starts flowing to your limbic system, it's like you start seeing tunnel vision your options dwindle down to very, very, very few. And you actually dumb down. Your IQ goes down to practically zero, goes down to lizard, because you've shut off the place where you can make those kinds of decisions. So we can work, you and I, each one of you, we can work on these things one-on-one. -on -one. 
but that's a general principle um, that you can try. And another thing that has been helpful to me in the past is um, when I look at a situation and it's very unpleasant to me and it's something that's unavoidable, I get outside myself and I look at my face and I see how my face looks and I hold that image of my face in my mind. So if I'm really upset, I can be, or something like that, you know, and I, and, I, and I make that face be in my mind. And then I can go to a happy place or a wonderful circumstance or being around people that I totally love and I can get the best possible look on my face. And then I can keep that look in my mind. And then I can say to myself, with my eyes closed, having both of those faces, I can say to myself, which one do you choose? And the body is naturally wired to choose the joyful face. Honestly, it is, although sometimes it's hard to get there. And so you can actually choose to have that face at any given time. Once you get that face in your mind, no matter what's going on, you can call up that face in your mind because the face is the most powerful change agent. What you do with your face, how you project it to yourself, how you project it to other people. And, and that's why the oils are so powerful because the oils can allow you to keep the blood flowing to the front by keeping you calm, upbeat, peaceful, and they can also energize that part of your mind, help you to focus, help you to recall, lots of things like that. So I know I'm running a little bit long today. It's a subject that I <laughs> we could probably do at least a week long retreat, if not a semester class on and we do all kinds of interactive exercises and get you to be able to play with your blood flow and play with your face and your images. But that's where I'll leave it today. Tomorrow's Sunday, and as you know, if you've been following along, uh, it's a huge um, wellness expo in Ambridge. Um, I and another person are the co-chairs of it, and we've been working very hard for a year to make it excellent. And I'll have a table there as Wellness Made Simple. So if you're in the area, please do stop by between 2 and 5. We have great speakers, um, lots of free raffle baskets, and a kid's zone, food demonstrations, you name it, we've got it. So I will talk to you on Monday. In the meantime, have a grateful day, have a wonderful weekend, and be well. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.